Yeah. So I'm interested to hear your thoughts on some of these like salary surveys. There's a bunch of companies. This might not, this audience is more of a general tech audience, but but specifically in our space, in the Salesforce space, do you know are these salary surveys? Are they like trustworthy? Some some of those salaries seem a little high to me. I but I you probably see a lot more jobs than I do. So what are your thoughts on these kind of things? I think in general salary surveys tend to be inflated, and I think sometimes we ask why does that happen and my thoughts are that occasionally agencies inflate them to say by 10, 15, 20% to hopefully get candidates to, to work for them and hopefully get candidates to, to build a relationship with them and say, if the industry is paying X and you're saying the industry is playing X plus Y, then maybe I want to work with you exclusively because you can get me X plus right. Y. And that's just a gut feel. I've never really heard that directly from an agency saying that's why they do sure. it. It's just reading between the lines some. But I think the best way to understand salaries is just asking others, right? Especially with Salesforce, go to the community group, right? Go to, if you're going to Salesforce Saturday or you're going to your local community group or maybe post it on one of the community boards saying, hey, I'm two to three years experience. Here's a little bit more of my background. Here's the industries I've been working in. Here's the skills I've acquired. What would be a good, I'm currently, even if you want to say I'm currently at 75, would it be unrealistic to look for 90 and just see what kind yeah. of the community says about that? I think the more information you can get will help guide you in the right direction. And unfortunately, salary surveys are just too broad. They don't really give enough details uh, and, and, and the details are re really matter. And so having conversations with, with individuals and diving into those details about your experience level and where you live and the industries you've worked in and the type of stuff that you've done will help formulate a better picture of what that what a true, I guess, realistic ex salary should be for you. Yeah, yeah, that's good, man. I I, I remember leaving boot, coding boot camp and being a little disappointed at my first salary, being promised yeah. this, you know, this number right. that I'm like so psyched for. And we, my family, there's a bunch of us, so I was like so psyched. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna make it. We're gonna have set aside some money. But like my first, yeah, my first job, I was making 55 a year, which is yeah. it's just nice. But I just that's not sure. what I was promised. That's and right. So, and that was my first. Yeah. So, that was actually my first job in Salesforce too. So. And I think sometimes boot camps are the same way as the salary surveys. I said boot camps say there's a good chance of you making X when you finish the boot camp. And it's, for me, it's, I want to see, show me the candidates who have went through your boot camp and gotten a salary of X, right? And show me ones yeah. that have gotten salaries of lower than X too, because I just, you can't just go off of a blanket statement and say, and those that have made more than X and then for the average, what's their background? Were they doing mm -hmm. something that was in a professional IT related, maybe when they went from being a, you know, a DBA or a network specialist or something else in IT over to Salesforce. So they had enough, you know, industry background to help them get a higher than average salary as well, which kind of skews right. the statistics. So again, that was in the details of these type of things and have broad statements saying one year at a one year admin making 80 to 95 K. I just think there's not enough inputs into that statement to make it uh, realistic enough. Yeah, it's interesting. If you read the small print on some of the coding boot camps, it's, it's, oh yeah, you can make this, but, and we guarantee you'll make a salary, at least this, but you have to move to San Francisco, oh, New yeah. York, <laughs> Chicago, sure. LA. But you're like, I don't want to yeah, move that's to right. these cities. And maybe you do, maybe, maybe then those boot camps are great for you, but yeah. So how does someone like best utilize a recruiter in the job in their job search? So I'm getting ready to start my job search. Maybe in the Salesforce world, I have a certification or I just graduated a coding boot camp. Like how do I best utilize someone like you, Chris? Yeah. So most of the time recruiters, and this is my personal experience, I usually don't get pulled into direct placement services with those that have, let's say, less than two to three years experience. Because usually companies are not willing to pay me a recruiting fee to find someone that they can essentially find for themselves using That's traditional true. job boards, things like that. But the things that you want to be able to leverage a recruiter for is, especially if they're specialist in a particular field that you're wanting to get more experience in is just ask them for advice as far as resume reviews. Do you take a look at my work to see if there's any feedback you can provide on my digital portfolio? What are you hearing about in the market? They're just for recruiters, we do this day in and day out. So we're talking right. to customers, we're talking to clients, we work on the phone most of the day or reading different articles about the industry. So I think if nothing else, just tapping into recruiters to find out what they know and how they can help you. Again, it's not going to be direct placement services because the, the, the chances of that happening are going to be small. 
And the one thing, you know, today I had someone ping me today. She's a relatively new admin. She said she's looking for her first position. And I said, you know, I can't probably help you directly. I'll keep an ear out for you as far as noise on the street, as far as what's happening. And then yeah. one thing I try to do is I, I like and share positions that come across my LinkedIn feed. And if you're following me, that may help bring up some additional opportunities for you. Yeah. And, and so it's just an indirect way of being able to leverage recruiters. Now, a lot of times recruiters, not a lot of times, sometimes recruiters are busy and, and, and they don't get paid for really helping people without direct placement services. But I think every recruiter should spend a little bit of time every week helping those that are trying to kickstart their career, just looking for some guidance, because there's a lot of yeah. value that we can bring to that relationship forming process. Yeah, that's really cool, man, that you do that and you have that feeling. And, and I just get the sense that it's not about, it's not all about a paycheck for you. And then that's you right. actually help, uh, enjoy helping um, people land cool jobs and helping companies too.